Good evening. Assalamu alaikum and welcome to Sports Extra. I'm your host Ahmed Nawaz. Once again, it's Monday, start of a new week and a lot to talk about, of course, in terms of sporting events around the world. Once again, we're bringing you an exclusive of Sports Extra. We're going to be joined by a personality who is indeed super in every category that she has been achieving as well. Of course, you might get a couple of hints, but the team of Sports Extra have got a profile package. Let's just take a look at tonight's guest, who she is and what has she been doing. I have with me Sana Mee from Pakistan team. Uh, Sana, huge landmark achieved by becoming number one ODI baller. Former national team player Marina Iqbal has become Pakistan's first female cricket commentator. She was a part of the commentary team during the Pakistan-Australia Women Cricket Series held in Malaysia. The captains with me, Meg Lenning for Australia and uh, Javeria Khan for Pakistan. Along with them, I have the match referee, Mr. Anis Mohammed. Marina was a part of national team from 2009 to 2015. Marina initially started as bowler, then switched to batting. She also served as a vice captain in 2010. Marina has represented Pakistan in 36 One Day Internationals and 42 T20 Internationals from 2009 to 2017, finishing her career with close to 800 runs and 10 wickets to her name. She has also won gold medals in Asian Games 2010 and 2014. Marina calls her debut as second dream come true. Recalling the journey, Marina Iqbal said that she became a cricketer after watching Imran Khan's victory speech at the 1992 World Cup. Marina said, I always wanted to be a commentator and now I think I've opened a new door for girls in Pakistan. There you have it, the very, very special guest for tonight, of course, an exclusive of Sports Extra. We just got to know uh, who she is, what she's been doing as well, and of course, cricketer turned commentator, but what a great career that she has had in terms of playing the game, and now, of course, in the level of commentating, and of, the, of course, the commentating she's doing, she's inspiring so many people out there, and definitely she makes us proud to be Pakistanis as well. She's none other than the very, very amazing, the super girl for Pakistan. She is Miss Marina Iqbal. Assalamu alaikum. Welcome to Sports Extra. Wa alaikum salam. Thank you, Ahmed, for the lovely introduction. You deserve every bit of it. First, uh, Marina, let's talk about the career in general as well. I truly want to ask from where this all started, of course, the love of the game, like you mentioned uh, once as well, that you always wanted to be a commentator. So where did this journey all start from in your early ages? Were you still a fan of cricket when you were growing up? Uh, actually, I belong to an army family and uh, it is a part of our upbringing that our parents encourage outdoor activities, extracurricular activities. And I was being the youngest one, was the spoiled one. So I had the, the you can see, uh, fairly every inch at my foot that I wanted to do. And uh, being a bit close to my brother, I used to follow him, used to play with his action figures, which I break a lot. And then when he used to play cricket, I would watch him um, and then at times would just stand and feel. So I think that I had the germs in me regarding sports and then my uncle uh, also played for Pakistan. He played side matches for Pakistan. But if I could take a one event that really persuaded me for taking cricket, that was 92 World Cup. Uh, seeing Imran Khan lifting the World Cup, it really changed a mindset. And after that, actually, I had that, I felt that passion and it's kind of intuitive. You cannot consciously make an effort to fall for the passion or to decide what you want to do. So I just felt that instant and significant love for cricket and after that I just started playing with the bat and ball. Absolutely fantastic knowing from where this all started. Uh, now Marina, let's talk about your career in general of course. When once you debuted for Pakistan, there must have been, you know, some great dreams at that point as well. Of course, one gets very nervous at the same time as well, because that is what you're aiming for. Having that star of Pakistan on your shirt truly says a lot. So what was that exciting feeling once you debuted? Well, actually, uh, I was the captain of Pakistan A team in 2008. Uh, we went for a series in Hong Kong and I won, like, the team won 3-0. So that was quite impressive for me. That gave me the confidence that I can play and I can lead. Uh, but obviously, reaching Pakistan team was always the dream. And uh, when we came back, it was a uh, uh, camp for T uh, T20 World Cup. That was the first ever T20 World Cup held in uh, England. And I got selected on the basis of Pakistan A performance. And uh, I still remembered that when I got that green shirt, I wore it and I sat in front of the mirror. Instantly, I realized that it's not a game anymore. It's a huge responsibility representing your team 
representing your country, representing your nation. And that actually shook me because obviously it's a sport, but when you represent your country and your nation and you know that you, lots of people, youngsters, your family, your friends are looking up to you and your teammate and your nation as well. So it's a huge responsibility. But that feeling, I think, still I don't have words to describe. It was somewhat mixed of responsible, being responsible, being happy, and having tears in eyes and getting that love of the country in your heart. So it was a mixture. Truly, it must have been. And of course, uh, you know, so many one-day internationals and so many T20 games that you have shared with the Pakistani side as well. Uh, you know, talk us about some of your teammates at the same time, the environment of the dressing room, because of course we know uh, uh, the cr uh, cricket in Pakistan in terms of the female cricket teams dates back to 1997, of course. But at the same time, we've saw, uh, you know, we've been seeing some great improvements as well. Uh, by the time you were playing, the team was already performing well. You yourself mentioned the 3 nil you got in Hong Kong as well once you were leading the Pakistan A side. How was that dressing room environment once you came into the side? It was amazing. Like we were the that bunch with which actually faced most of the struggles. Uh, like I had my seniors, Taskeen, Sanamir, Asmavi Iqbal, and Aruj Muntaz, Rana Jave. They were all together to help the youngsters. But we faced a lot of difficulties that nowadays the youngsters don't realize. Uh, I remember sharing this incident because that was actually what persuaded us to take it not just as a sport but as a responsibility and wanted to do more. Um, in 2007, uh, we were headed to South Africa. There was a camp in Aftabad. And at that time, the Aftabad Stadium was nothing but a ground and two dressing rooms. So we shared these dressing rooms and each dressing room consisted of 14 players. We had to do our laundry ourselves and 300 was the daily allowance. But at that time, we came together as teammates. We find the love for the game and to do good for our country. That was the starting point where we all decided that it's not about the facilities, it's not about the money. Right now, it's about Pakistan. It's about justifying our love for this game. And if we have the talent God has gifted us, we need to justify it and do big. So I think that that struggle eventually turned out in rewards. Uh, in 2010, we won the gold medal. After that, there was a huge appreciation and we got uh, appreciated and people started to recognize us. PCB obviously started supporting us. People started recognizing us as, yes, these are the girls who can play cricket. So I think it's been an amazing journey. But struggling at the start, I do thoroughly enjoy that because after that, rewards are the thing that we can really cherish. Well, this is a sorry part that we've seen over the years, of course, and Marina, I must ask your comments on this as well, that throughout the world, there has been a lot of advocacy for female counterparts getting equal amounts of benefits and the facilities that their male counterparts have been getting as well. In the previous years, we've seen a, a huge amount of advocacy, especially from the side of football, where the United States won the World Cup, and of course, their star player, Megan Rapinoe, also made this, these remarks publicly where she said that they deserve equal pay grades in every facility that is there as well. Uh, so far, things in Pakistan have been improving. We've seen the PCB, uh, you know, increasing the amount of central contracts as well and all other facilities. But still, you would agree that there is still room for a lot of improvement. Yes, definitely, there always is. But I think that times have changed now. People have started recognizing, not in this field of sports, but overall, whenever a woman takes any field as a profession, she has to face things from society, from family, from the professional environment. But I think that now people have started recognizing that talent, skills, and results are not gender-based. So uh, hopefully we, ha we are seeing change in overall world, but I think that the more, it can be a bit unfortunate, but the more we produce results, I think that can really uh, give a wake-up call to many people that you cannot justify talent on gender basis. Women equally work hard, they are equally talented, they are sightful, they have a vision, they can lead a bunch of uh, men and it's nothing wrong with it. But uh, yes, there's a lot of room for improvement. But I think that eventually the world is coming to the terms that talent is not gender based. Absolutely. Talent is never gender-based. I completely agree. Now, let's talk about something very special for you, and that is, of course, 
from a super super performer in terms of being on the field to bringing that super mesmerizing voice uh, through commentating of course we grew up listening to a lot of great voices in terms of Richie Benno we had Mark Nicholas Michael Slate everybody else but then of course Ramiz was very special at the same time for us as well Nasir has had so many names you like you mentioned always wanted to be a commentator we've we, we're seeing some great commentators around the world uh, in terms of the female side as well personally Isha Goa is there as well then you coming on to the scale as well how was that a uh, paradigm shift that you made from being a player to commentating and how did that journey unfold well i always had it in me because after 92 world cup i started to i really started to uh, copy our greats like siklan mustaq wasim akram and uh, mustaq ahmed and whenever i used to do that i would set up a scenario in my mind and then commentate on it so i knew that i had in it then uh, i was always a part of uh, debating societies in college and school so but yes the again the thing that pushed me the event that really pushed me in uh, just going for this commentary field was in 2017 i was in england uh, i was there for uh, playing the world cup and uh, before one match i went down and i i was scheduled to give an interview to mel jones I already adored her because she was an amazing commentator and while giving the interview I did realize I just my mind kind of just swapped around and realized that there were female commentators from New Zealand, England, Australia, South Africa, even India but no one from Pakistan. So at that very moment I decided that the moment I get retired from this game I will pursue commentary. Definitely, and who's been one of your favorite commentators growing up so far? Well, I I adored Mark Nicholson and uh, Nasir Hussain, and then obviously Sir Ramiz Raja. He's been an inspiration. And on the female side, I really liked Melanie Jones. She has been a mentor for me. She helped and guided me a lot. And Isha Goa, obviously. So these are the ones I look up to. Fantastic people, all of them indeed. And now you're joining that star-studded lineup. We'll continue the conversation with Marina Iqbal. But talking about Pakistan's history. Uh, in terms of cricket, especially the women cricket history that we've seen in Pakistan. Let's just uh, take a look at this report by courtesy of our Sports Extra team and then come back and continue this absolutely fantabulous conversation with Marina Iqbal. The Pakistan women's national cricket team represents Pakistan in international women's cricket. The team is organized by the PCB, a full member of the International Cricket Council. The concept of women's cricket was first introduced in Pakistan by sisters Shazia and Sharmeen Khan in 1996. Pakistan made its one-day international debut in early 1997 against New Zealand and later in the year played in the 1997 World Cup in India. The team's inaugural test match came against Sri Lanka in April 1998. In its early years, Pakistan was one of the least competitive of the top-level women's teams and after its inauguration appearance in 1997, did not qualify for another World Cup until 2009 event in Australia. However, the team has played in all four editions of the Women's World T20 to date and also participated in the Women's Asia Cup and the Asian Games Cricket Tournament. The Pakistan National Women's Cricket Team won a gold medal in the inaugural Women's Cricket Tournament in 2010 Asian Games. In 2014 Asian Games, Pakistan Women's Cricket Team defeated, once again, Bangladesh Women Cricket Team in the final match by four runs. This was the second consecutive title won by Pakistan women against the same team in Asian Games. Since then, the national women's team has improved gradually and has once again showed that it is a great team for international competitions. Well, there you have it. Courtesy of our team here at Sports Extra. A brief history about Pakistan cricket in terms of the women's cricket team and all that they have been achieving as well. Now, we're in conversation with the supergirl for Pakistan cricketer and commentator, Miss Marina Iqbal. Of course, Marina, commentating becomes a completely different ball game. But like you said, you always had a hunch of it that you wanted to do it. But I'm sure so many things are now uh, coming up in terms of technological advancements and, of course, uh, the people, your fans and everybody who's listening to you want a lot of more information. They're much updated. So it's definitely a daunting task where you've got to keep up to the history, the analysis of the game, and of course bring down stats and figures as well. Yes, of course. And uh, I did my first series that was uh, Pakistan Women versus Australia and Malaysia. And I've been really lucky that PCB has been supporting me from the word go. But after doing that, I did realize that it's a totally different field. Uh, whenever we talk about commentary, people who are not aware of it, it seems like just you need to pick up the mic and comment on whatever is going on, but it's beyond that. 
So after that, I realized that, and I believe if you want to do something, you have to do it the right way. So after that series, I went to England and in January uh, 2099, and I did a commentary course with uh, uh, Gavin. He is uh, he's actually ICC media head, and he also conducts courses. So that was a four-day course, but it really uh, gave me the knowledge, the technicalities, the technical things, tactical things, working on the voice expressions, and there was a lot of things to learn. So uh, I'm really glad that I did that because after that, I realized on what fields I have to work, and that really, uh, you can say, shine my uh, career and the way I work. Uh, it, it always brings a character to uh, the crowd as well, of course. We know that people demand a bit of humor, and you must get that wittiness in you. So do you tend to have those moments when you get that humor into perspective, of course, bring that wittiness out for the crowd as well? I think the sports person is always witty. You cannot take that out of uh, him or her. But I think, yes, I, that's obvious thing that you need to be engaged with your audience. You need to keep them uh, committed to your commentary and the game. So there are times that the game turns out to be boring or a really stagnant stage. Then that's your duty to keep them engaged with yourself. And obviously a humor now and then, some stats and some technical things. These all are the parts of commentary, of a good commentator, if I have to say it. So, yeah, these are the things that can really make a big difference in you as a personal person and you as a commentator. And the difference uh, if you take, I mean, compare other commentators. So these are little tiny things. Otherwise, you will be stagnant like others and uh, wouldn't make any difference if people would listen to you or not. It doesn't make a difference. You have to bring something to the plate. Definitely, and at times it does call on you to pull the leg of your fellow commentator as well. But I'm sure that even happens in the dressing room where you always have that one individual who's joking around and pulling everybody's leg. Which individual have you come across as such? Well, in my cricketing career, I, I cannot think any other name apart from Javeri Abadud. Uh, her nickname is Jerry, and it's because that she seems very serious, and uh, at times that looks like she won't be uh, making fun or doing naughty things, but she's the most naughtiest and wittiest in our team. And more often at serious times and you can say difficult times, she would be the one to bring up a cracker joke or just pull a leg and just settling down the nerves in the dressing room and the team. Absolutely, she would be. Now, Marina, uh, being apart from a commentator and a cricketer, you're uh, also an inspiration girl, aren't you? Because you've been inspiring so many people out there, so many girls out there who want to take up cricket or commentating as a professional career. We understand that the society is growing, so much barriers now being eliminated in terms of the society in our country, but there are still a bit of hurdles out there as well. So how do you intend to inspire so many more people out there? You know, just give them the confidence that these girls can take up, if not cricket, then commentating, because it is a full-time professional career. Well, of course, one of the main reasons I took up commentary was also to give a message that if someone who loves uh, cricket and ha has tried to play it and didn't make up to Pakistan team or even has, hasn't played the game but has the love for commentary and cricket, they can always pursue a field related to cricket. They can always stay close to cricket and on-field on action. Uh, whether it's commentary, it's empowering, it's uh, uh, coaching or training, so many fields are now there that you can explore. So one of the major reasons for me to take this uh, initiative was obviously to encourage women and young girls that if you have a passion, you want to do something, believe in yourself and just go for it. Because there are so many fields overall in the world that are not being explored. And we being women are always in a predicament that we might do it or we might not be successful or we might not bring the level of efficiency that's required, but that doubt, these doubts obviously, obviously keeps us behind the line. We need to break these barriers. We need to trust ourselves and our talent. And I always say that if you do it the right way, if you have the talent, if you work hard, there's nothing that you cannot do. Again, I would really pressurize on this thing that talent has nothing to do with gender. It's your skill, it's in your hand, how you want to do it and to what extent you want to go. Absolutely, it is. And of course, Marina, like you mentioned, you've been part of an 
um, ICC course that you travel to for a couple of days as well in terms of commentating. Do you feel that we need to do more in terms of our local structure at the same time as well? Obviously, uh, we've got so many girls out there who could want to take this up as a professional career, but there needs to be more engagement in terms of commentating, a uh, couple of workshops, just create the awareness to people how this can be their career. Yes, yes, of course, I think that should be done, uh, but again, I think it's a collective thing. If you are really persuasive and you want to take something and you want to take a profession, the effort starts, <coughs> excuse me, the effort starts from within. If you really want to do it, I wanted to do it, so I talked to PCB and then they really helped me and, and then I went to England and persuaded the course. But again, yes, I think that now I know that a lot of youngsters are looking up to me. There are female empires. A lot of youngsters are looking up, coaches in the world. So this trend has started that you can see female coming and leading their way through profession. So I think that we being women, we can always help and encourage other youngsters, other women who want to approach, who want to take things as profession, and that would be an added help. But again, as an individual, you need to be committed and determined that you want that passion and you should be willing to work hard on it. Absolutely, willing to work hard on it. And as she keeps on mentioning, and I think that is the take for tonight as well, that, uh, you know, uh, in terms of talent, then I don't think gender is a specific thing that we need to be discussing at the same time as well. We'll continue this fantastic conversation with the super girl, Marina Iqbal, but right after this very, very short break, stay tuned to Sports Extra. Welcome back to Sports Extra with me, Ahmed Nawaz. We're in conversation with the Supergirl cricketer turned commentator, Miss Marina Iqbal. Now, Marina, people have been sending in their questions, of course, and people want to ask a lot in terms of your career as well. And, you know, one of these very interesting things is that during your career, which has been that one memorable performance that you have truly enjoyed? Well, there have been many, but again, I think that at the start of my career and collectively as a team, 2010 gold medal was a great pushover. I mean, uh, we, we did win a few uh, matches and series before that, but standing there receiving the gold medal and then when you hear your national anthem and you realize that you are the reason that your flag is going up beyond all other flags, I think that feeling, that proud moment uh, cannot be defined in words and there's no replacement for that. So I really cherish that moment. It still gives well, me We all do. We all do. We felt so much... Uh, you know, pride at the same time as well once that gold medal was there and you, uh, all of you brought it back at the same time as well. Another one was definitely one of the toughest opposition that you faced in your career. I think Australia, uh, because they are so professional that there is not a single loophole you can find on field, off field, in their attitude or in their work ethic. They are really perfectionists. You learn a lot by playing against them. You learn a lot by watching them. And we have been learning a lot. We would see the way they work, the way they're committed to their game, and the mindset they have. So overall, I think Australia, you can see the results. They are the one of the best oppositions. Uh, they are. Well, uh, we've got to talk about that factor as well, shouldn't we? That the terms of professionalism we see uh, all around the world, and then, of course, 
we come to Pakistan as well, truly professionalism is here as well, but there tends to be a lot of different techniques that we've found throughout the world and, you know, once you compare them with Pakistan as well. And definitely we are moving towards a structure where we want to strengthen all of these aspects as well, but oh, you've been traveling around the world with the team as a player and now as a commentator as well. So how do you see these changes that we can make, obviously, to at least get to that level where the differences between international levels and what we have? Firstly, I think that we need to understand that their structure, most of the countries like England, Australia, even India, New Zealand, their cricket, women cricket fall behind the years. I mean, they started like 35 or 30 years before us. Secondly, we need to understand that if you want results, if you want to set up uh, a good system, then you need stability. And that's where we lack. We usually don't have stability. We're quite impatient with demanding results, and we don't give much of the time and credit to the people working on it. So to have a good structure, solid structure to, to get results, we need constant hard work, a profound structure, and then again, a stability. There, uh, that's what I think we lack as a nation as well. We demand results quite often and quite quickly. So there have been things now going on. We have been working on uh, women's structure. We're working on one of the most important things that is the grassroots level. And we need to understand that if we are unable to produce young players that can really match the international standard, then our cricket is going nowhere. So I think that's the main area where PCB has started working. And then again, being society, we need to accept, especially if I'm talking about women cricket, that they are a professional cricket team. They demand, they need each and every single thing that a men team gets. That's the way to professionalism and that's the way to demand results. So overall, I think my new changes are needed to be made, but overall, from the time I started and when I look today, there's a lot of difference and work is being done in the right places. It is absolutely, but one thing which we've stressed over the years, Marina, is a, a premier tournament for our women cricket teams in terms of the domestic level as well. We've seen Australia replicating it brilliantly through their Women Big Bash League as well. And since we have so many franchises coming in, so many people with the right amount of finances, like they did to the PSL as well, made it a star-studded tournament. Do you agree that there must be something, uh, at least on equal footing for the female players as well, just to create that hype in the game as well and just pour money into it? Yes, definitely. I'm always in favor of leagues. I've seen uh, so many players develop by just playing leagues abroad because when you share a dressing room with a superstar, with a professional who's been performing a lot on the international level, you tend to get uh, the vibes and you learn a lot from it. But again, if we talk about women cricket in Pakistan, I think, again, we need to understand and focus on the quality of cricket. We don't have a bigger pool like other countries have at the grassroots level. Now our pool is increasing with the time when I started, there were hardly 25 girls, 20, 25 girls. But now after working on a grassroots level, we are getting youngsters. And now the pool has been increased to 50, 55. So it's a matter of, the, matter of time when the whole bunch of group is being qualified and they are providing a good professional cricket. Then we can uh, transform them into a league that way they can learn with playing a good competitive cricket other than just not for the sake of just organizing a league and trying to show it off. It would not bring the outcome we really want. We need competitive cricket. So for that, we need players of that level and of that technicalities and mindset that can really deliver the results we're looking for. Completely agreed. And Marina, of course, I must ask you at the same time as well, how is isolation working for you? Of course, being a sportswoman and a commentator yourself, you're so much used to traveling and cricket all around. Uh, it is tough on the mind as well, but how are you hanging in isolation? To be honest, it's fairly tough. It's not easy because a lot of our activities have been dismissed and our normal life has been on hold. But again, I think that uh, I tend to find out positives in whatever we're doing. And I find it as an opportunity to work on myself as a human to work on my skills, whatever I, whatever skills I have, uh, to spend a lot of time with my family, which I did miss whenever I used to travel. And more importantly, gain knowledge of so many 
many topics, so many things that I wanted. So uh, I kind of turned that into a positive thing, and I think that's exactly what everyone should do. It's hard, but it's about a collective gain. So that's the right thing to do. But what we do in our spare time is totally on, on us. Exactly. Marina, thank you so much for being on the show tonight. You've been an inspiration to millions out there. And I, like I said at the start of the show, and I'll say it again, that you make us very proud to be Pakistanis. And we wish you the best of luck for your career. And we're eagerly waiting to hear your voice once again on the commentating circle, of course, once things resume. My pleasure, Emma. It's been a lovely interview. And I think that whoever is watching it, whether it's a young girl or young boy, whoever wants to pursue, uh, wants to get a dream fulfilled, go for it. And I always say that dream is like a treasure. It will give you fortune, but you have to be worthy for it. So work hard, believe on yourself, and just go for it. Exactly. Thank you so much. That was the super girl for Pakistan. Of course, we're going to turn commentator Miss Marina Iqbal and you heard her and you heard the journey that she has been through. And one thing she very particularly points out is determination. So if you've got that instinct in you, you've got that willpower, as Marina mentioned, that you're going to get your dreams come true and you're going to achieve everything you want to. And of, of course, uh, that is one thing that we've got to take inspiration from so many people around the world, including Marina Iqbal. You can take some inspiration from her career as well, the way she's gone through about it. Now, of course, a professional commentator as well and just gives you young girls and boys out there so much hope and so much to look forward to and take Marina Iqbal as your role model as well and definitely follow suit and get your dreams come true at the same time as well. That's all we have for this exclusive edition of Sports Extra. Of course, we're going to be bringing you exclusive content throughout the week once again, courtesy of our great team that we've got behind the scenes as well from the producers, the IT people, of course, the engineers, and of course, the camera people, the research department, everybody who's involved can never ignore all of them. And of course, we've got to tell you that these are essential workers at the same time as well, because uh, they are people who are, of course, leaving the safety of their home to bring you all of this very exclusive content. And I think a shout out and a lot of respect to all of them. Without this team and without their, of course, abilities and their dedication, all of this would never be possible. But at the same time, follow the SOPs given by the government. Stay safe. Stay at home if you're not an essential worker and take care of yourself. We'll be joining you tomorrow with another exclusive program of Sports Extra from me and the entire team. It's goodbye for now.